Welcome to MRI Sectional Anatomy, Chapter 2. This chapter covers the cranium and facial bones. The information in this video is credited to the book, Sectional Anatomy, written by Lori Kelly and Connie Peterson, Wikipedia, and many sources. Let's start with the cranium. The cranium is composed of eight bones that surrounded and protected the brain. These are, one frontal, two parietal, one ethmoid, one sphenoid, one occipital, and two temporal. This is the lateral view of the skull. You can see the frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, occipital, and temporal bones in the red boxes. This is the frontal view of the skull. You can see the frontal, ethmoid, parietal, sphenoid, and temporal bones in the red boxes. This is a 3D lateral view of the skull. Please note the bones in the red boxes. The anterior cranial fossa, frontal fossa, is composed primarily of the front bone, ethmoid bone, and lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and contain the frontal lobes of the brain. The anterior cranial fossa, frontal fossa, of the cranium is composed primarily of the front bone, ethmoid bone, and lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and contains the frontal lobes of the brain. This is just another picture that shows the anterior fossa of the cranium. 3D image that shows the anterior fossa of the cranium. The middle cranial fossa, temporal fossa, is formed by the body of the sphenoid and temporal bones and houses the pituitary gland, hypothalamus, and temporal bones of the brain. These are 2D and 3D images showing the middle cranial fossa, temporal fossa. The posterior cranial fossa, infratentorial fossa, is formed by the occipital and temporal bones and contains the cerebellum and brainstem. These are also the 2D and 3D showing the posterior cranial fossa. Quick review. Anterior cranial fossa contents frontal lobes of the cerebrum, olfactory nerve which cranial nerve 1. Middle cranial fossa contents. Temporal lobes of the cerebrum, pituitary gland, cavernous sinus, trigeminal ganglion, internal carotid artery, hypothalamus, and the following cranial nerves, optic nerves, CN2 and chiasm, oculomotor, CN3, trochlear, CN4, trigeminal, CN5, and abducens, CN6. Posterior cranial fossa contents are cerebellum, pons, medulla oblongata, midbrain, and the following cranial nerves, facial, CN7, vestibulocochlear, CN8, glossopharyngeal, CN9, vagus, CN10, accessory, CN11, hypoglossal CN12. Parietal bone. Two parietal bones form a large portion of the sides of the cranium. The superior point between the parietal bones is the vertex. Each parietal bone has a prominent central bulge on its outer surface termed the parietal eminence. Let's look at the frontal bone. The frontal bone consists of a vertical and a horizontal portion. The vertical or squamous portion forms the forehead and anterior vault of the cranium. The sinuses in the frontal bone are called the frontal sinuses. See the purple arrow. The glabella, in humans, is the area of skin between the eyebrows and above the nose. The term also refers to the underlying bone that is slightly depressed and joins the two brow ridges. It is a cephalometric landmark that is just superior to the nasion. The horizontal portion forms the roof over each orbit, termed the orbital plate, and the majority of the anterior cranial fossa. The supraorbital foramen is a bony elongated opening located above the orbit, eye socket, and under the forehead. It is part of the frontal bone of the skull. The supraorbital foramen lies directly under the eyebrow. In some people this foramen is incomplete and is then known as the supraorbital notch. The ethmoidal notch separates the two orbital plates, it is quadrilateral, and filled, in the articulated skull, by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. Ethmoidal notch in the frontal bone. Ethmoid bone is the smallest of the cranial bones and it is situated in the anterior cranial fossa. This is the anterior view of ethmoid bone. This is the coronal CT of ethmoid bone with cristigalli. The cristigalli is a thick, midline, smooth triangular process arising from the superior surface of the ethmoid bone, projecting into the anterior cranial fossa.
Sphenoid bone is the butterfly-shaped sphenoid bone that extends completely across the floor of the middle cranial fossa. Sphenoid bone is a compound bone that forms the base of the cranium, behind the eye and below the front part of the brain. It has two pairs of broad lateral wings and a number of other projections, and contains two air-filled sinuses. The superior orbital fissure transmits cranial nerves 3, 4, B1, and Vi, oculomotor, trochlear, ophthalmic, and abducens nerves, as well as the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins. Together the optic canal and saw form an important pathway between the intracranial and extracranial compartments at the orbital apex. When a fracture of the sphenoid bone occurs, the orbital base of the skull is impacted. Given its function, this can lead to numerous dangerous complications, including damage to cranial nerves and eyes as well as loss of color vision. The occipital bone forms the posterior cranial fossa and the inferoposterior portion of the cranium. The occipital bone is the most posterior cranial bone and the main bone of the occiput. It is considered a flat bone, like all other cranial bones, meaning that its primary function is either for protection or to provide a broad surface for muscle attachment. The scalp, which consists of five layers, covers the bone. Embryology of the skull base. The occipital bone is one of the first bones of the skull to develop and consists of four parts, namely, one basilar, one squamous, and two condylar parts, that encircle the foramen magnum. The squamous part of occipital bone forms the dorsal and caudal part of the occipital bone. It has an exocranial and an endocranial faces. On the exocranial surface, there is a transverse protrusion dorsally called the external occipital protuberance. It extends laterally on either side by the nuchal crest. This is the axial CT of occipital bone with internal occipital protuberance. The temporal bones are two major bones in the skull or cranium. They help form the sides and base of the skull, where they protect the temporal lobe of the brain and surround the ear canal. The other major bones in the skull are, the two parietal bones that make up the top of the skull. Two temporal bones contain many complex and important structures. Please learn these structures of the temporal bones. Many cranial nerves and blood vessels pass through the temporal bone. Injuries to this bone can cause a loss of function in the facial muscles, as well as hearing loss and heavy bleeding. This is the inferior surface of the temporal bone and cranium. This is the sagittal CT reformat of temporal bone. This is the coronal view of temporal bone. Please try to learn the structures of this bone. Another view, axial CT of temporal bone with internal auditory canal, IAC. This is the axial CT of temporal bone with foramen lacerum, jugular foramen, and carotid canal. These two images portray the details of the structure of the external, middle, and inner ear. A, is the orientation of the external, middle, and inner ear in coronal view. B, coronal view of auditory ossicles and tympanic cavity. Axial, T2 weighted MRI of the inner ear. Please note the sagittal of the IEC. Remember that the sagittal plane is from right to left, or left to right. Because of the IAC is tilted, so when you scan, you have to tilt the box or focus to obtain the true sagittal view of the IAC. Now, let's talk about the fontanels. Within the neonatal cranium are six areas of incomplete ossification called fontanels. The largest is the anterior fontanelle located at the junction of the upper parietal and frontal bones termed the bragma. This is the 3D CT of 17 week old infant cranium, lateral view. And this is the 3D CT of 17 week old infant cranium, oblique view. Facial bones are the primary bones of the face are the mandible, maxilla, frontal bone, nasal bones, and zygoma. There are 14 facial bones are, inferior nasal concha, 2 of them, lacrimal bones, 2, mandible, maxilla, 2, nasal bones, 2, palatine bones, 2, vomer, and zygomatic bones, or zygoma, 2. Another anterior view of facial bones. Please note the red boxes and pay attention to their adjacent bones. This is the lateral or sagittal view of facial bones. Please note that you can see the nasal bones easier in this view. This is the 3D CT of inferior surface of cranial bones with mandible disarticulated. Inferior nasal conchi and vomer.
the inferior nasal conchi project medially and inferiorly along the nasal cavity and are easily identified by their scroll-like appearance. These conchi, along with the superior and middle nasal conchi of the ethmoid bone, divide the nasal cavity into superior, middle, and inferior medi. The vomer project superiorly from the base of the nasal cavity form the inferior portion of the bony nasal septum. Mandible. The largest facial bone is the mandible. The mandible is largely horizontal and vertical portions, and the junction of these points is termed the gonion. The curved horizontal portion, the body, contains an alveolar process similar to the maxilla. And, the vertical portion is called the ramus. Each ramus has two processes at its superior portion, the coronoid process, which serves as an attachment site for the temporalis and masseter muscles. The condyloid process or condyle, which articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. They are separated by a concave surface called the mandibular notch. The temporomandibular joint, TMJ, is a modified hinge joint that allows for mastication chewing. The mandibular fossa and articular eminence of the temporal bone form the superior articulating surface for the mandibular condyle. The articular eminence creates the anterior boundary of the joint, prevent the forward displacement of the mandibular condyle. The articular disc or meniscus lays between the mandibular condyle and fossa, and acts as a shock absorber during jaw movement. The articular disc is not tightly bound to the fossa, but moves anteriorly with the condyle. Several ligaments help maintain the position of the articular disc. The articular disc is attached to the medial and lateral surfaces of the condyle by the collateral ligaments, the lateral collateral ligament or temporomandibular ligament. The medial collateral ligament. The four muscles on each side of the TMJ provide movement of the mandible and are collectively referred to as the muscles of mastication, the temporalis muscle. The masseter muscle, the strongest muscle of the jaw. The medial pterygoid muscle, which closes the jaw. And the lateral pterygoid, which opens the jaw and moves it side to side. This is the 3D scan of the temporomandibular joint. Now, let's learn the paranasal sinuses. The paranasal sinuses are air-containing cavities within the facial bones and skull that communicate with the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is responsible for filtering airborne particles, as well as warming and humidifying are going into the lungs. The sinuses are named after the bones in which they originate, the ethmoid sinuses, the maxillary sinuses, the sphenoid sinuses, and the frontal sinuses. Ethmoid sinuses are contained within the lateral masses or labyrinths of the ethmoid bone, present at birth and continue to grow and honeycomb into a varying number of air cells, which are divided into anterior, middle, and posterior. We are almost done with this chapter. Hang in there. The paired maxillary sinuses or antrum of hymor are located within the body of the maxilla, inferior to the orbit and lateral to the nose. Largest of the sinuses in adults, but very small at birth. The roots of the teeth and the maxillary sinuses are separated by a very thin layer of bone, and often it is difficult to differentiate between the symptoms of sinusitis and infection of the teeth. The sphenoid sinuses are normally paired and occupy the body of the sphenoid bone just below the cella tersica. Frontal sinuses. The frontal sinuses are located within the vertical portion of the frontal bone and are typically paired, separated along the sagittal plane by a septum. The frontal sinuses are rarely symptomatic. The frontal sinuses are the only paranasal sinuses not present at birth, and usually form around age 6. Osteomedal complex. Drainage of the paranasal sinuses occurs through various openings called ostea. The major drainage pathways and structures of these osteomedal channels form the osteomedal complex or osteomedal complex, OMC. The OMC links the frontal sinus, anterior ethmoid air cells, and the maxillary sinus to the middle meatus allowing airflow and mucociliary drainage. The orbit. The bony orbits are cone-shaped recesses that contain the globes, eyeballs, extraocular muscles, blood vessels, nerves, adipose, fat, connective tissue, and the lacrimal apparatus. The structure of each orbit is as follows. The roof, which is composed of the orbital plate of the frontal bone and most of the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. The medial wall, which is incredibly thin, is formed by the frontal process of the maxilla, the lacrimal bone, the ethmoid bone, and the body of the sphenoid bone.
The lateral wall, which is the thickest, is formed by the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the zygoma. The floor, which is also the roof of the maxillary sinus, is formed by the maxilla, zygoma, and palatine bone. The apex, the posterior portion, is formed by the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure, which allow various structures to enter and exit the orbit. Soft tissue structures of the orbit. The globe, eyeball, has an irregular, spherical shape and rests in the bony orbit, and is divided into two compartments. The anterior compartment, located anterior to the lens, it contains the cornea and iris and is filled with aqueous humor that helps maintain intraorbital pressure. The posterior compartment, located posterior to the lens and filled with vitreous humor to maintain the shape of the orbit, it is surrounded by the retina, which consists of layers of tissue that include photoreceptors responsible for vision. Lacrimal apparatus. Each lacrimal apparatus consists of a lacrimal gland, lacrimal canaliculi, lacrimal sac and nasolacrimal duct and responsible for the production and distribution of tears. The almond-shaped lacrimal gland is located in the lacrimal grove, superior and lateral to the globe, where it provides most of the volume of tears. The lacrimal canaliculi leads to the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac, found within the lacrimal groove of the orbit, continues to the nasolacrimal duct, that empties into the inferior nasal meatus. Muscles of the eyes. Six major muscles work to control the movement of the eye. The rectus muscles group consists of four which arise from a tendinous ring that surrounds the optic nerve and is located at the medial portion of the superior orbital fissure. The superior, inferior, medial, and lateral rectus muscles act to abduct and adduct the eyeball. Two oblique muscles, the superior and inferior, abduct and rotate the eyeball. Optic nerve. The optic nerve is the nerve of sight. It commences at the posterior surface of the globe and courses posteromedially to exit the orbit through the optic canal and is entirely surrounded by dura mater from the meninges of the brain. This chapter is a lot. Keep watching the video over and over again. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.